Well, good morning and welcome. It is great to see everybody here today. Let's stand and sing and shout to the Lord. And it will so 
Oh. 
<laughs> so today we're going to look at some of these. We're going to kind of overview all of this. And the first thing we're going to do is awaken to longing. Awaken to longing. That feeling that we have deep down that says there's got to be more. There's got to be more. This is a longing that lies deep within each of our souls. There's got to be more to life than just this. Wake up, shower, eat, work, come home, eat, go to bed. There's got to be more than just this type of life. And these longings are so universal. They show up everywhere. These longings show up in the stories that we write, in the art we create, in the songs we sing. Let me prove a point. I want to, I'm going to say the first line from some, or a popular line from some songs. And I want to see if you can recognize them and finish the sentence, <laughs> finish the line of the song. These are songs about our longings. <clears throat> I'm going to need your help. So, and I really would like to sing these, but I don't know these songs that well. But the first one is, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Exactly. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Or this one from the Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. Hey, there we go. Everybody knows the Rolling Stones. How about the song? And I, I love this song. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, in all the wrong places. <laughs> These familiar tunes, they point to the longings that we all have. And we remember these because they do strike a chord with us. You know, we have these longings. And so I've talked about we long for love, for purpose, <coughs> for meaning. And so the first thing we're going to do is look at the longing for love. The longing for love. Glenn Wolf, any of you ever heard of him? Until I started preparing for this, I never had. He holds the record for the most number of marriages. <laughs> One at a time. At 29. His longest, his longest marriage lasted 11 years. His shortest marriage lasted 19 days. <laughs> and of course, I'm sure by now you figured out that he was a Baptist minister. <laughs> What I want to know is why didn't he stop after the fourth, or the tenth, or the twenty-fourth attempt? He just kept going. Why did he keep trying? Why do most of us keep trying? After all, relationships are hard. We get dumped, we get hurt, yet we still long for love. We still long for love. It is natural. It is deep down. It is inbred. It is one of these things. We are hardwired to want love. And why? Well, if one friend stabs you in the back, do you find yourself reaching out and risking friendship again or not? Yeah, you usually do. Because... We have that longing. We're all looking for love. Inside of all of us is the longing to be loved. There's also the longing for purpose. The longing for purpose. We long for purpose. We want our life to matter. We want our life to count for something. We want to know we're making a difference. A 
Think back to when you were a kid, maybe five or six years old. What did you want to be when you grew up? A doctor, a fireman, a cowboy, or a veterinarian, or a nurse, or an astronaut. We all had a longing. We all had a job that we wanted to be when we grew up. Myself, I wanted to play pro basketball. I'm about a foot short being able to do it. Now ask yourself, why in the world were you dreaming about having any kind of a job at the age of five or six? You didn't need a job. You didn't have any bills to pay. You were, probably didn't even know how to write your name. Why would you think about what you wanted to be when you grew up? Because we want purpose. We want direction. We want a reason for what we're going through, what we're going to do. You already had a desire for purpose. Even at the age of four or five or six, you had a desire for purpose. You wanted to matter. You wanted to accomplish something in the world. This longing for purpose goes right hand in hand with a longing for meaning. We long for love, we long for purpose, and we also long for meaning. I think every one of us has had enough pain in our lives that at some point we ask, why? Why? In 1999, after the shooting at our church in Texas, where we were, and seven people were killed, I remember that night, I was up where everybody had gathered in the local school auditorium across the street, everybody that was there. And I was talking with some of the kids that my son knew, and with him and my wife and some of the other adults that were there. The one thing that everybody was asking was why? Why did this happen? Why did he do this? And we didn't know. And to this day, nobody knows. But we like to know why. We ask ourselves why. You know, why, God, if you're so good, do we, did you allow this to happen? We want purpose. We want meaning. We want life to make sense. We ask ourselves the question, what is the point of life. Why am I here? Some of you may be asking that question. Why am I here? What is going on? Why am I struggling? Why am I suffering? Why am I sick? Why am I hurting? Why is this happening? Why am I in so much pain? And I can't stand here and say, I have the answers, because I don't. But these questions, these needs are examples of why and how we long for meaning. We want to understand the meaning. And some things we can understand, and some things we can't. And the things that we can't understand, the more we dwell on them, the more angry and frustrated we get. And that doesn't help. If suffering is causing you to question God, I want you to think on this. There's a reason why suffering feels not just painful, but also wrong and unfair. 
There's a reason you feel like your life and the world aren't the way they're supposed to be. God gave you those feelings. God feels the same way. God knows life is not supposed to be unfair. Life is not fair, but God knows that that's not the way it's supposed to be. God knows that the world He created in the garden with Adam and Eve that was supposed to be for everyone was perfectly fair and just. And then sin entered the world. And God's beautiful, perfect existence that He created for us was warped and changed and perverted and it became unfair. God feels the same way you do. He wants things to be fair. He wants everything to have a clear cut meaning. But because of sin, it can't. Your desire to see wrongs righted and suffering come to an end is put in you by God. Your desire to see fairness, to see justice, it's put in you by God. It is a gift from God. Understand the longing for love, the longing for purpose, and the longing for answers to the big why questions are longings that we all experience. I wish I had all the answers, but I don't. Just like you, I have questions. But I know that God has the answers. Some of them I can handle, and He'll give them to me. Some of them I can't handle, and He says, you're not ready for that. And that's okay. I can live with that. Please, understand this. The problem isn't that we have these longings and desires. That's not the problem, because they're given to us from God. The problem is we seek to fulfill these longings on our own. The problem is we try to satisfy these longings and answer these questions without Jesus. He's the one that gives us these feelings. And He's the one that can fulfill them for us. This whole series, we're going to be talking about the prodigal son from Luke chapter 15. And I want to look here, verses 11 through 16. Jesus is talking here. He also said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. So he distributed the assets to him. Not many days later, the youngest son gathered together all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his entire estate on foolish living. After he had spent everything, a severe famine struck the country and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. Jesus tells what by many is considered the greatest short stories in all of literature. The prodigal son ranks right at the top of the list. It's a story of a lost son who has a longing. He says there's got to be more than just living on the farm, waiting for dad to die. In the context of first century Middle Eastern culture, a son's asking for his inheritance early was one of the worst insults a father could ever endure. Because the son is basically saying, Dad, you're of no use to me. All I can get from you that's of any good 
is my inheritance. So give me what's due me. Get out of my life. A son in Jesus' day was not only expected to wait till his father died before he would receive his inheritance, but he was also expected to take care of his father in his old age. So this son was insulting his father in multiple ways. Now, before you cast the son aside as grateful, ungrateful and selfish, is it possible that he just said out loud what most of us feel. We sometimes feel like life isn't bringing us what we hope for, or what we wanted, or what we feel like we deserve. Yeah, we feel that way. He just said it. What I'm about to say next may surprise you. That is, thinking and feeling that you want something more is what you should feel. Thinking and feeling that you want something more is what you should feel. <coughs> one of the worship songs we sing about here is one that was done, I believe, by Casting Crowns first thrive. It says, we're not made to simply survive. You were made to thrive. And when we live a life in which all we're doing is surviving, it's natural to think and feel we want more. And that wanting more comes from God, how He created us, how He made us in the image of God. See, why is it that God feels the same way we do? Because He wants more than what we've got. He wants more than how we're living. He wants more for us. He planned better for us. And so these longings come from God. And it's okay to feel this way. Now, understand, not everything you desire is good for you. Remember, I said when I was a little kid, I wanted to grow up and play pro basketball. Many is the time I prayed, God, when I wake up in the morning, let me be seven feet tall. My desire was not good for me. I can guarantee you. And so, we have to get our desires lined up and in tune, in sync with what God's desires for us are. And when everything fits together, it's perfect. Not everything you desire is good for you, yet your longings for love that will truly last, your longing for purpose, for living and your need to make sense, to have meaning out of the hard things in life, all these longings come from God. But the son in Jesus' story was like so many of us. He was convinced he had to leave his father and go somewhere else to find his perfect life and to fulfill his longings. So Jesus says he set off to a distant country. The story doesn't give us many details to what activity occurred in that distant country. It just says, Jesus just says he squandered his wealth and wild living. We're left to imagine what that wild living might have looked like in Jesus' day. If the story were told today, the son probably would have ventured off to New York or to Hollywood in search of something more. I can imagine it was a journey that included parties with binge drinking and women who were willing to satisfy every desire. He thought he needed fun and money and freedom to enjoy life. But it didn't take long for the son to blow his inheritance 
and very quickly his adventure turns sour. The story continues. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the field to feed the pigs. Remember, to the Jews, the worst, the most unclean animal there was was a pig. And here he was having to feed them and care for them. He learned his longing for love wasn't satisfied in women. His longing for purpose wasn't found in partying. His journey left him asking even more why questions. Why didn't this turn out like I thought? Why isn't anything good anymore? Why am I so lonely and empty? Why am I miserable? Any of this sound familiar to you? The story of the lost son is each of our stories. We've all gone through stages of this at some point, if you're not going through it even right now. The reason Jesus told this story is to help us find our way home, back to God. See, God gives us the longings, and God gives us the way to fill the longings. The question, life's most important question, where will you satisfy these God-given longings? Will that draw you close to your Heavenly Father? Or will they push you away? What's it going to be? Throughout these next five weeks, we're going to be looking at five awakenings that occur during almost everyone's spiritual journey. These five awakenings are something we all need to Come alive again and again and again. Today we've been talking through the first of these awakenings, the awakening to longing. The first awakening is all about recognizing our longing for love, for purpose, and for meaning. It's not satisfied running away from God. It's only satisfied running to God. See, these longings come to us from God. Life is something that we can't understand apart from God. Life is a gift from God. And God tells us what we need to know. I'm going to pull out my soapbox here in just a minute. Tells us what we need to know in His Word, the Bible. And we need to be reading it. Some people have called the Bible basic instructions before leaving earth. It is the owner's manual for life. If you don't read the manual, you can't figure it out. And then you might be sitting there going, yeah, but there's parts of the Bible that's hard to understand. Yes, there are. If you've got a question about a book, something that's written in a book, what is the best source of information to understand it? The author. When I was in school, if I had a choice between, if I had a class I had to take, and I had two professors, and one of them wrote the textbook, and the other one was just using his textbook, I always chose the class that the author of the book taught, because I figured he was one step closer to the resources and to the facts and to the understanding. If you've got a question about the Bible, ask the author, God himself. Basic instructions. These longings that we have come from God. You want them filled, ask him how to fill them. God, my life is empty. I need love. I need a place to belong. I need a place to call home. I guarantee you, one of the first things he will do is point you to a church. Because a church can be home. A church can be a place to belong. A church can be family. 
you don't believe me, ask any of our members here. They'll tell you this is a place of family. Everybody's family. This last week I had an opportunity to minister to a couple of different families. And they both would say, thank you. I said, that's what family does. We take care of each other. But if it's not this church, it will be a church because you need to be in a fellowship of believers. And there are churches that will make you feel welcome and that will accept you. You need to find one of those. If you're looking for love, the first place to look is to God and to one of His churches. Absolutely. You're looking for purpose. You're looking for meaning. God is the place to look. You won't find your longing satisfied as long as you're running away from God. See, in the story of the prodigal son, the son said to the father, I don't need you. Now, in the next few weeks, we're going to see that the son comes to realize, yes, he does need the father. And you need to realize you need your heavenly father. He's the one that is giving you these longings, and you need him. I want to challenge you today with a 30-day wager from today through August 21st, August 20th, don't want to be technical. A 30-day wager. What if we all decided to pray this prayer together every day for the next 30 days? God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. If you're not sure God's real, ask Him. He will make Himself known to you. He will reveal Himself to you. If you're not sure... Pray this prayer every day. God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. Take this 30-day wager. Meditate on it. On what it says every day. Because I know that I need God to be real in my life. And I want to experience Him more and more every single day. And the only way I can do that is finding my way back to God. Finding my way to Him. Where will you go to fill these longings that each of us have? Jesus gave them to you. Jesus can fill them. These longings came from God and they will either draw us to Him or they will drive us away from Him. And usually, and we will see this in the story of the prodigal son, usually because we're human, and there's a reason we are referred to throughout the Scriptures as sheep, because we're about as smart. We let these longings drive us away from Him before they draw us back to Him. Before we realize that going our way didn't work and we need to come back to our Father. Imagine what it would be like to not have to run after love anymore. Imagine what it would feel like not to have to search for purpose or look for meaning. My prayer is every one of us will let these longings lead us back to God. This is where we are. This is what we're going to be looking at over the next five weeks, four weeks after today. Will you let God become real to you? Will you ask Him to become real to you? We're going to start off just by giving you an invitation. This is God's invitation. Will you trust me? Will you try me for 30 days? Ask for 30 days. God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. 
If you already know that God is real, and you need to get back to <clears throat> get back to Him, if you know you already need Jesus, you can take that first step today during our invitation, and you can come. We're going to start a song. We're going to have our invitation song, <clears throat> and I'm going to be standing down front over here. After we get started singing, I'm going to move down here. And you can come up and say, I need to get back to God. I need Jesus. Maybe for the first time, I'm ready to give my life to Him. Or, I've been running, doing things my own way. And I know that that hasn't worked. And so I want to come back to God. And I need to come back to Jesus. And I will pray with you and I will lead you. You may want to just come to the altar yourself and kneel and pray and say, God, I've done been messed up. I've gone to a distant country and squandered all you've given me. And I want to get back to you. Whatever it is God is inviting you to do, this is your opportunity to respond. So I want to invite you. Let's stand. We're going to pray. We're going to sing. And while we're singing, we're going to respond to God. Father, I thank you so much for your love and for your provision. Thank you for these longings that you give us. And I just pray, Father, that you will help us to seek you for the fulfillment of these longings. Because if we try to do it ourselves, we will fail because we cannot do what only God can do. I thank you for sending Jesus to make it possible for us to have a relationship with you and to have these longings fulfilled. Lord, give us the courage and the boldness to respond to your invitation right now. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The song we're singing is, Lord, I give you my heart. Will you make that commitment and give your heart to Jesus? <clears throat>
time of invitation. We're going to be continuing to talk about this over the next few weeks. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Folks that maybe are on this same journey as the prodigal. Maybe on the same journey as you. Invite them. So that they can find their way back to God. As we prepare to go, uh, we got things fixed, and so in the pews in front of you are the communication cards and the uh, envelopes for offerings. And so if you have those ready, drop them in the offering plate on your way out. If you do not have those ready, if you did not bring your wallet or your checkbook, you can go online and you can give that way. Go to our church's website, click on Give, and follow the prompts. It's safe and easy. Again, I want to invite you back for tonight at 6 o'clock for our Bible study on Revelation. Wednesday night for prayer meeting. Prayer is the engine that drives our church. We need more people powering the engine. Come and pray. You can't find your way back to God without God. That's what our scripture verse reminds us of. Let's say our scripture verse, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That includes finding your way back to God. Ernie, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you, first of all, for being in your house today. Allowing us to worship you and allowing us, when we stray, to come back to you. I pray personally and corporately that this month you make yourself real to each and every one of us. Father God, we thank you for that in advance. We ask you, God, now as we go our separate ways to Grant us dirty mercies as we go home. And bring us back, Father, when the time comes for this evening and Wednesday for the prayer. Thank you, God, for all these things. In the name of your great Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.